the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the, of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Mighty One, God the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to its going down. I will not rebuke you for your sacrifices or your burnt offerings, 
which are continually before me. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Mighty One, God the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to its going down. Merciful God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to seek and to save the lost. Graciously open our ears and our hearts to hear his call and to follow him by faith, that we may feast with him forever in his kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is found in Hosea, chapter 5, beginning with verse 15. I will return again to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Then they will seek my face. In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. Come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us, on the third day he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord, his going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. O Ephraim, what shall I do to you? O Judah, what shall I do to you? For your faithfulness is like a morning cloud, and like the early dew it goes away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and your judgments like light that goes forth. For I desire mercy, and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read a portion from Psalm 119. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Your heart is as as 
It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. Righteousness. 
Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. tax office. And he said to him, Follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened, as Jesus sat at the table in the house, that behold, many tax collectors and sinners came, and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our text for the second Sunday after Pentecost is found in Matthew chapter 9, verse 13 from our Gospel reading. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I do not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Here ends the text. Last week on Trinity Sunday, we heard in our Gospel reading another command. Jesus gave this command in today's reading, go and learn. Last week, what did we hear? Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded, have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Great Commission, we heard last Sunday, Trinity Sunday, that every believer in Jesus Christ is sent in this command. This is easily understood because Jesus' disciples not only include the twelve who directly heard this command, but we, his disciples, who also hear now and are sent to all nations, to our nation, in our time, for Jesus promises to be with us to the end of the age. He wants all people to be made his disciples through his precious word and sacraments. One cannot go and do Jesus' command unless one, of course, is first made his disciple by receiving his complete forgiveness. His merciful healing of our soul. For Jesus is the great commission, the great physician of the soul, as today's gospel reading most clearly tells us in the calling of Matthew, the Apostle Matthew. Matthew, the tax collector, whose profession was despised by the Jews. Matthew was despised because he collected taxes for Rome. He was considered a political traitor to his fellow Jews because he served Rome, that was, who was occupying them, and tax collectors were grouped with other known sinners, as we hear from our text, because they also had this known tendency to collect a little extra, skip a little extra off the top, and nobody could do anything about it. But this publican, is who Jesus commanded to follow him and to be one of his 12 apostles. Would he have been your first choice? Maybe not. Jesus was doing much teaching and healing by the sea, and his fame was spreading so that many heard and came to him and were healed. Matthew heard Jesus' direct command, follow me, and with his command, came the gift of forgiveness and healing of Matthew's soul. So that he left all that he had, all that he had with his profession, and followed Jesus, as, as we know from the parallel accounts in Luke chapter 5. Matthew received great mercy, and Jesus gave this great mercy abundantly to him. So great was the love that he had received from Jesus that Matthew threw a great party. Those are the exact words that we hear in Luke chapter 5. Not just a little feast, but a great feast, for he had received great mercy. Matthew showed great mercy then by inviting fellow tax collectors and those known sinners, the ones that were despised, to the party. Jesus came to the party because he loves all people. He loves all sinners. The Pharisees were there too, of course. The Pharisees were not happy to see Jesus mingling with those sinners and tax collectors. So great was Jesus' mercy for Matthew that in the next chapter, chapter 10 of Matthew chapter 10, 
when he's writing the list of the apostles, when Matthew writes his own name, what does he say after him? The tax collector. He wants everyone to know for sure who he was before he was called to follow Jesus. A sin. He had received great mercy. Jesus himself said in our gospel reading that he came not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Those who see their great need of mercy are given great healing of the soul with Jesus' forgiveness. For those who are well, that is, those who think they're well, they really have a fatal sickness within that they don't see a need for a physician. The Pharisees themselves, who were following Jesus around, did not see their own soul sickness. They only saw their supposed righteousness. Jesus said, I did not come to call those who think they're righteous, the righteous, but those who are repentant. And Matthew was repentant, and he was healed of his soul sickness. So we also acknowledged our soul sickness at the beginning of the service, didn't we? When we confessed our sins, we confessed to God all our sins and iniquities, which we, we have offended God and justly deserve our temporal and eternal punishment. And then the great physician, Jesus, pronounces his absolution to you through one of God's servants, a minister called by Jesus himself to say the words of Jesus himself to you. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And when you forgive one another privately, your sins are forgiven by the same power of the Holy Spirit. What great mercy we daily need to be, to be given, for we sin much. What great need do we have to hear His absolution in His Word, and also we see at His table the forgiveness of our sins through the very body and blood Jesus shed, gave and shed for us on the cross. He invites us, He commands us to do this often. For we need to be forgiven often. Our sins are many. Our soul is sickened throughout the week by the offenses that we have committed. And we need the medicine of His forgiveness at His feast to the table. What great mercy is found at the Lord's Supper. That Jesus can forgive sins. This was not accepted by the Pharisees. It was rejected. Right before Jesus calls Matthew, what does he do? In the verses right before our text, he heals a paralytic. And you remember the story. Well, Jesus was followed by many people. There are so many people that this paralytic who was being carried by his friends, who was showing mercy to, his, to their friend, could not reach Jesus. So what did they do? You know the story. They made a hole in the roof and they lowered him down. So, what does Jesus do? Well, Jesus says, well, he saw their faith and he says to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. Is that what they came for? I thought they were coming to be healed, for him to be healed. But first, the most important thing is that his sins are forgiven. Ah, the Pharisees didn't like this one bit. This man blasphemes. But to show that Jesus has power to forgive sins, he then commands the paralytic to get up and walk, and he does. Which is easy, Jesus asks, to say words of mercy, your sins are forgiven, or do a miracle of mercy. Most would say, just saying words is easier, not an actual miracle, but how does Jesus answer? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He then heals the paralytic. Jesus, true God and true man, has the power to do both. 
because he did the harder, the most hard thing that no one could do, and that is give his life on the cross. Bear our sins on the cross and forgive all men their sins. He bore the wrath of his Father for the sins of all mankind. Our opening hymn that we sang, O Christ, to our hope, our heart's desire, we sang in verse 2 these words. How vast your mercy to accept the burden of our sin and bow your head in cruel death to make us clean within. How vast is mercy to accept Israel of being the sacrifice, the one and only sacrifice that would forgive us of all our sins. Not the burnt offerings offered by the Israelites, but his offering on the cross. He humbled himself, bowed his head. Oh, we cannot begin to fathom what great mercy he gave to us to make us clean from within. Jesus' mercy is vastly given and vastly desired from us. Jesus does not require for us to give something that he has at first given us. So when Jesus says in our text, Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. I do not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. He first gives us, of course, what he desires. Mercy. He gives us his righteousness. That we, out of love, would show mercy to others. And that was the Pharisees' main problem, wasn't it? And ours also, because of our sinful nature that resides in us, the difficulty of showing mercy to others. For well, the Pharisees thought they were better than others. They're not fair, you see. Why should Jesus eat with tax collectors and sinners? We certainly wouldn't stoop to their level and associate with them. We're so much better. We're righteous. And that thinking comes from a sick heart. Who doesn't see the great need of Jesus' mercy? of Christ's mercy for one's own soul. Do you experience this sickness sometimes? Of looking down on others because of others' so great sins compared to yours? How quickly we must repent of our pharisaical self-righteousness and take the law out of our own eyes in order to invite others to the great feast to receive the great mercy of Jesus. Go and learn what this means, Jesus commanded. And it is a lifelong learning, isn't it? And each of us needs to know the mercy of Jesus, know it so well, in order to get it so well. So our prayer in verse 4, our opening hymn, we sang, Oh, let your mighty love prevail to purge us of our pride that we may stand before your throne by mercy purified. Yes, Jesus continued to give the Pharisees opportunities to learn, to go and learn of his mercy. After Matthew's calling, Jesus was invited to another feast. A Pharisee gave a feast. His name was Simon. And we get this story in Luke chapter 7 in the parallel reading. Actually, it's not found in Matthew, but Matthew's calling, of course, is found in Luke chapter 5. And Jesus did not turn down this invitation because he loves all people, Pharisees included. So what happened? A woman answered at the feast and began weeping. Weeping so much that her tears flowed upon the feet of Jesus. And she washed his feet with her tears and dried his feet with her hair. And she brought an expensive oil, perfume, to anoint his feet. What indignity! This Pharisee Simon, his name is given, thought, why would Jesus allow her to do this? Well, what does Jesus say? First, a quick story. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors, one who owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, 
I suppose the one whom he forgave more. The woman was forgiven much, so she loved much. The Pharisee, on the other hand, though he could not pay his great debt of sin, was freely forgiven, yet he did not love because he had not received Jesus' forgiveness by faith. He still thought he was righteous and in no need of the physician. Jesus answered, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the, son, the same loves little. Not that her sins were forgiven because she loved much. No, it's just the reverse. She loved much because she had received much mercy. So Jesus says to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered into your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss. But this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. We have been forgiven much by our great physician Jesus. His righteousness covers our sins in our baptism, and we receive the washing of all our sins. Head to toes. This is so much more than just a common courtesy. It is an act of supreme love, of vast mercy. It is how Jesus commands us, therefore, to make disciples, going, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this mercy, Jesus desires that we show. He desires it from each of us to see others as in great need of his love. What he has first shown to us, he graciously leaves us to do day by day by the power of the Holy Spirit. So as God said to his prophet Micah in chapter 6, he repeats to us, he has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Matthew was a pretty good tax collector, keeping record of everyone's debt. He knew his record of sin was great. And he walked on me. Follow Jesus by repenting of his sins, receiving Jesus' great mercy. Ah, uh, the psalmist says in Psalm 130, O oh Lord, should you, if you should mark iniquities, O oh Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared, loved, followed, trusted, and show mercy to others. For we have received, as the Lord says at the last verse of this song, with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Israel, including the Jews and the Gentiles, all, all his people. For we have the same Father Abraham through faith in Jesus, our great physician. In his name, we give thanks and all glory. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
peace be with you. We pray. As dear children, as dear dear Father, let us bring to the Lord our prayers this day, knowing that He will hear us and respond to our petitions. Confidently we come to our Father in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. As citizens of our blessed land, we pray for the world in which we live and for the leaders of every nation, as well as our own, that peace may prevail around the globe and that we may live without fear in our times. Lord, in your mercy. In this season of growth, we pray for the church that it may grow and flourish even in those places where persecution for our Lord's sake is known. Grant that there be unhindered access to the table of the Lord in every land. Lord, in your mercy. Gathered in heart and mind, we pray for those in need of our special petitions, including those distanced from this fellowship today, and including those dealing with illness and, and the homebound. We also remember those who grieve this day and those with special needs. Especially commend to your, to your care, Suzanne and Harriet. We, we have left to your loving care also April and Renee and Don Herbsleb. And we pray for Leroy. We ask your special blessings upon them, giving them strength in their needs. We pray for my father. Pray for Karen Green, Karen Burke. We also pray for Don Hay and Bill Lugan. We lift them up according to your good and gracious will. Bring strength to the weak, assurance to the fearful, and hope to those in peril. Lord, in your mercy. With thankfulness, we remember those whose earthly lives have been completed, including relatives, friends, and members of this household of faith, and so many others. Grant that we may be blessed by the memory of all who have fallen asleep in Jesus, as in blessed hope we wait the resurrection to life eternal and the final invitation to the banquet in God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, gathered in the forgiving love of Christ and assured that our Heavenly Father here is our petitions. We say with hopeful hearts and voices, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you peace.
Oh, oh, oh.